Welcome to the Simply Trade News Podcast. We are back like every Monday. My name is Anik and I'm here with Lalo. Hello, Anik. Yay. Hey. <laughs> we are um, and, and we're doing something different now. Um, we're actually shaking things up. You'll see in 2025 for sure. We're really trying to upgrade our news segment, which will be great um, for you. Um, that's why we're doing it. Um, and we, we think that you're just going to get more out of it that way. But, um, for now we're sticking to the same concept, but you're trying new things out. So if you see some videos of us sitting together, um, that's, that's something new. And then I think we're going to change things up the way we're doing it. Um, just trying new things out to see what works. Uh, first off, uh, there's lots going on in the industry. Um, well, you know, we've talked on the new president situation. There's so many things people are talking about, like tariffs, like how will international relations be, blah, blah, blah. And we have touched on that a lot. Um, I'm trying to let that go a little bit because we really, it's everything is just hypothetical. So um, we're kind of going to remain on to what is really happening right now in the industry. So um, I'm going to mention a few things and then we're going to dive deep into one article that um, stuck out to us. So right now there's a new regulations on export control of dual use items introduced in China. Um, these regulations present a comprehensive framework aimed to, at regulating the export of dual use items in China following the enactment of the export control law in 2020. Um, then there is the new EU import control system to release. Um, and we're definitely going to dive into that one because it seems like this one is a big one. And then we have the importer due diligence should include isotopic testing. We've definitely talked on that. So you're talking about isotopic testing. Um, that article came from Sandler Travis and Rosenberg yeah. STR. So I wanted to make a quick comment before we go into the the big the bulk of the story here that we're going to be talking about. So we um, were approached, or or uh, we were at a conference in Detroit, and the director of forced labor for CBP, his name is Brian Hoxie. He's been on our show. He yeah. was on our show before, and he did a forced labor. He came up to me. He's like, "Lalo, we need to do another episode. There's been so many changes, and um, you never." Uh, can imagine that we're trying to keep up and we're trying to do this. We're trying to get out information to the public. So it's really cool. He actually came to us and said, let's record an episode. He says, there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of, uh, things coming up or a lot of innovations, uh, with, um, uh, forced labor, including he named very specifically, uh, isotopic testing because CBP is starting to do a lot of that. So that's going to be a really cool episode. We're hoping to schedule it here. Hopefully in December, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have it. But for sure, um, early next year. Uh, and, and of course, it depends that the CBP and the government always has a lot of um, different um, time schedules that they have to meet. But watch out for that because I'm really excited for that episode. Um, so CBP's guidance outlines the importance of isotopic testing for imported due diligence, especially in verifying the geographic origin of commodities like cotton. Um, isotopic testing employs light stable isotopic anal anal analysis to identify risks in supply chains and screen high risk cargo effectively. So all those articles you can find on the Global Training Center page as we have a news roundup and we let that out every Friday. So you are already able to see it. You're, you can read about it in a summary form and you can also dive into the actual article. Today, the article we mainly want to focus on is um, the new EU import control system too. And I believe we might have a full podcast on this. It's not sure yet, but if we do, we will let you know. But we're going to talk a little bit about what is happening. So what even is the ICS2 release three? So this is part of the EU's import control system to ICS2. Um, it's a new customs pre-arrival security and safety program. Um, right now, we know that ocean carriers will be affected like Maersk and MSC, freight, freight forwarders, um, inland water 
water waterway. So I'm sorry, guys. My English is、Inland、catching、waterway. up. Inland waterways <laughs> operate our companies. Oh my god, operators. Okay, and then road and rail transport companies.、Um, really, anyone moving goods into EU, Switzerland, or Norway. So I mean, that's like anyone going to there、uh, over there to that continent side.、Um, Okay, so can we talk about the key data requirements, or what does that entail, or what is happening? Why is this such a huge topic right now, Lalo? Okay, so it's big because、um, you did make a point, or you did say that it、um, this was implemented、uh, on June the third, twenty twenty four. That might be true, Anik, but、um, the thing is that it looks like not. It looks like, but that was only for、uh, maritime and inland. Uh, waterway carriers. Okay, so on December fourth, coming up in a few days here after Thanksgiving. That's where I got it、yes, from.、Uh-huh. Yes. So、okay. December fourth is for the maritime,、um, like filers. Okay, so like your Mercs and stuff like that. Okay, and then on April first, twenty twenty five, is the third phase or a, or another further phase that's getting implemented, and that is for road and rail services. So now we're covering everything. We're covering the inland waterways. We're covering the ocean carriers, and now we're and also the road and rail carriers, right? So、um, they have different timelines, and the way the reason it's significant is because、uh, most, if not not all, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say all, most or a big majority of the commerce that usually comes into almost any country is from ocean freight. Right,、mm-hmm. um, you see a lot of planes carrying cargo. You see a lot of trains carrying cargo. You see a lot of、um, trucks carrying cargo. But most of it comes through the water, hits a dock,、yeah. and then they transport it into another、um, mode of transportation. In this case, usually rail or or road. So it's real significant because on December fourth, now everybody's gonna who, who's doing this and shipping into Europe is gonna have to. Um, adhere to these regulations, so that's that's、um, a very big deal there as to why、um, today we are talking about it. You know,、yeah. it, it's it's it just happens to be something that in some cases some、um, carriers or, or or shippers or even people who depend on you know all these other、um, carriers. Are, are are not aware of, and and they need to know, or they would need to know the different requirements、um, for、uh, doing this. And, yeah, yeah、mm-hmm. and I know that. So there, with that being said, since there's so many changes, there's going to be probably a lot of impact,、um, such as you know new required systems that let you do all these security things that the updated.、Um, Requirements that they need to fulfill, and then you know who is even working with these systems. You need to train your staff.、Um, I read about that, and then as well as、um, it seems that there needs to be a closer col- a collaboration with their clients. So meaning like the ones that are abroad. So you have to strengthen those relationships and really dive deep into into what you need for the system and what you need to fulfill these requirements. And、um, so that can lead to possible shipment delays, right? Because if people are not able to use the systems, or if people are not, you know, complying with it just yet, or not understanding how to use it, then there will be delays. So this is kind of coming at a fun time since it's going to be the holidays, and you want to sh- <laughs> you want to ship all this. So I don't know if this、yeah. is the right time to be having delays. Well, it might be because、um, let me also tell you if anything is shipping into. A country for the holidays, it should have already been there even、okay. by now. Yeah. So let's anything that is not there is obviously last minute and and、uh, you know just kind of like it's probably going to come in through air anyway. You know, so it's not don't worry.、Yeah. Your presents have made it already. Your、yeah. presents are already in your country. <laughs> yeah, Saint, Saint Nicholas over in Germany is.、Um, is already has everything ready for you guys. So、yeah. anyway, and and、um, so. So we're okay there. I'm just saying, generally, we're okay there. So, okay.、Um, why? So now, U.S. forwarders and um, and uh, shippers, you know, why are they needing to have to, let's just say, not worry, but you know, just be aware of this. So, there's a few data elements, and so 
here's the thing. All of these are items that you already should have in your system because um, you're already processing several other documents, several other data. You're already filing so much information that you should already have it in your system. It's just that now you have to be yet one other uh, form of filing. Okay. So okay. there's um, some of the, 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 the elements that need to be um, filed or, or reported are the six digit level of the HS code. Um, they, they, those, those would need to be, uh, that's one of the data elements. The other one is um, the detailed description for the shipments, you know, prior to arrival. So this is prior to arrival um, based on, on the requirements. Okay. Uh, the net weight for each HS code needs to be also um, present. If you're an economic operator registration, um, if you have your ID number for the shipment, um, for for the shipment of the receive the, the recipient or cons consignee, sorry, having trouble, that needs to be reported. The information about the seller and the buyer for anything that's obviously commercial uh, transactions, and the owner information for non-commercial transactions, um, and like the final destination, the EU. Remember, this is for anything coming into the EU. And not necessarily, or even inner uh, crossing through the EU, not necessarily for like coming into the U.S. or anything like that. So, so those are the data elements that we need to um, start reporting. Uh, again, if you're a big ocean shipper, it's going to have to be um, starting December fourth. Okay. And, and so there is a few preparation steps that people can take or, you know, organizations can take, I think, to, I mean, at this point, it's happening December 4th. At this point, you should already train your staff. You know how to use the system. December 4th is going to come and you're just going to fly. There's not, this is not about flying ship to Europe, like nothing happened. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a few preparation steps that, um, I encountered just researching a little more and it seems that, um, so consider it, it says consider registering as a house level filer. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So house level filers, um, I guess, and I'm going to cheat here a little bit. It's just companies that fall into the category of, of, um, filing ocean shipments typically, which include like freight forwarders, NVOCCs or non-vessel operating commercial carriers, sorry, long, long word, um, and direct customers. So what does this mean? Um, we're talking about like the DHLs, Cooney Nagel, oh. DB Schenker, Expediters. That's who we're talking, Siva Logistics, companies like that, that are the non I mean, I'm not non. I was going to say NVOCC. That are the house level filers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that um, that is typically who you will see that are, which is like a big majority of of the um, carriers anyway. So that's why it's a big deal. That's why we're saying we needed to kind of dive deep or a little further into this because of that. So and then, like you said, also earlier. Um, that we're going to probably have a, f a full episode to discuss this in more yeah. detail, which we will. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, invite uh, some guests on the show that have that deal with this day in, day out, and we'll have them talk about it. So, so I think, I think it'll be a good episode only because of the, the, the requirements behind this. Okay. Yeah, I see that. And it seems like it seems very extensive. The way if you look this up, you'll see multiple articles on this and you'll have multiple resources and different directions it can go. And uh, I mean, if you're working it, you might know a little bit more about it, but it's still so um, broad, I feel like. Um, so I guess you just need to prepare for, you know, detailed data submissions. You need to su prepare um, your team for it, your business, investigate ICS to system integration, like see if there's other integrations, if the ones you're using is not, you know, working for you or for your business. And just like making sure that this is not throwing your business off or making for making mistakes that we get to trade compliance there. I think um, if, if everyone is trained and know their job already, it's probably easiest to integrate this system in you and have these changes. But if your team is already kind of, you know, wishy-washy on understanding the rules and understanding um, 
compliant or being compliant, then it makes it a little harder. So I'm going to give Global Training Center a little shout out for that, because <laughs> if you're trained, um, you should be fine if you trained with us. Um, so so this ICS2 release three is significant for import businesses, correct? Is that that's basically what we got out of this. Um, and there's there's lots of preparation to be done for these businesses and um, definitely staying informed about upcoming changes. Do you think that this is a, this is a, um, a, you know, a release that's still being worked on and could change over, you know, upcoming months or years, or do you think it'll stay at this one for a while? No, well, this is just an effort for, for the EU in this case to have um, information ahead of time of, of something coming in. I, it's, this is going to, it's here to stay. In other words, it's not like something that they're going to decide like, oh, this is not a good idea. Let's not use it or do mm -hmm. it anymore. You know what I mean? So they, it's, it is something, um, that they, that, that everybody's going to have to start complying with and it's going to have to include in the regular operating procedures. So, yeah. so I don't believe, um, it's something that you 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 can count on maybe it going away here soon or anything like that. Yeah. So so I think we're good with that. Um, so it's just really just a matter of like you said, like educating your staff, educating your your upper management to let them know of like what maybe any IT requirements you're going to need to have if you're not storing or or ta or carrying some of that data um, because you will need to start uh, reporting that. So, okay. and then remember, this is an advanced um, filing system, meaning that you have to provide this in advance of the shipment or the cargo arriving at the port. So, so um, it's not like once you're there, here it is, you know what I mean? It, it, obviously you're not going to hand it off. It's, it's electronically filed, but, <laughs> but um, so anyway, but yeah. Okay. Well, you heard it here first, maybe, maybe you have heard about it. I hope you have, if you're um, in business um, in there, because you're going to use it and it's going to come up in just about two weeks or a week from now, I it'll think at that week. point. It'll probably be a yeah, week from now. Can. Yeah. It's, uh, next yeah. Monday. Yeah. So um, if you have any questions or want further information on this topic, we hope to have an episode up sometime soon. We're working on something for you because it is a significant topic um, that we want to talk on. Actually, someone came to us and said, hey, you need to maybe talk on this, you know, because it is something um, that is happening in the industry and obviously a change. And actually, I think that's kind of cool how that happens, that people now come to the podcast and they say, Hey, look, I want to, we need to talk on this. This is happening in my industry. Right. Obviously the trade is a huge industry, but there's so many sectors in trade that maybe don't communicate, but there's different sectors that come to us and say, Oh, we need to talk on this. Like this is happening right now. And it's affecting a lot of people, even though we're not aware of it because you know, it's not really in our playing field. Right. So that's definitely true. So they do reach out now and uh, we've reached a level where we have several professionals out there who listen to the show and like maybe have had time to digest how we work and how we do our episodes and have come to us and said, Hey, um, you know, y'all talk about, I'm going to give you a good example. Cause in about three or four weeks, sometime in, in this year, we're going to have an episode from someone that, that came up to me. Uh, I was at a conference and he said, y'all talk about uh, drawback and you've had some drawback episodes. I really like, um, I really like those because that's my area of practice. But have you all considered this, let's say, twist or this different variation as it affects uh, drawbacks? And we said, no, but do you want to come on the show? He's like, yeah, I was going to ask if I could come <laughs> on the show. So he is. He's coming on the show. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll have yet another aspect of, of drawback. So yeah. so that's that's a really neat thing uh, about there's, that. There's really no ending to it, I feel like. But Anyhow, we uh, talking about ending. We're going to end this episode right here. Um, you do a fun fact? Yes, I do have <laughs> a fun fact for you all. Um, so I'm going to talk some quirky transport transportation laws. So um, let's start with Sri Lanka. By the way, Sri Lanka is my mom's favorite place. Um, <laughs> I think she rode an elephant there. I don't even know if that's allowed anymore, <laughs> but she did. Um, so there, whistling while loading or unloading cargo is forbidden 
So it's considered bad luck to them, which is funny. (laughs) And then in the United States, you can ship baby alligators under 20 inches long. Ship them where? Anywhere? (laughs) Ship them. (laughs) I don't know where, but you can ship them. Maybe that's your calling. Whoever wanted to ship alligators, that's you should. Under 20 inches, though. And then in Norway, boats must carry an anchor weighing at least one-tenth of the boat's total weight. Oh, wow. That's okay. big. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, that those are my fun facts for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it's a little bit different. We had a few hiccups, maybe. Um, we're going to definitely get better from this one. It's only going to go up. We're testing a few things, and we're glad to have you on the ride with us here. Um, we'll be back next Monday. Um, please subscribe. Let us know how you like the podcast. Let us know what you want to hear from us. And follow us on LinkedIn and YouTube. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much. And we'll see you next week. And happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, don't forget that. I know. <laughs> that, that'll that be Everybody's fun. Everybody's well, going to be importing a lot of food into their mouths on Thursday. So. Exactly. <laughs> and maybe talking about these quirky transportation laws. Of course. So. Oh, and on Thursday, tune in because we have a non-Thanksgiving related um, episode. Uh-huh. So on Thursday, we have... Our recording from IE Canada. So in Canada, they don't celebrate Uh, Thanksgiving. (laughs) So Andy is at the conference as we speak, um, um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So, so he, he's there and he is uh, recording a full episode with Kim Campbell on stage at IE Canada to talk about all things Canada, of course. And, uh, so they, um, we're gonna, Try to zoom it out here really quick. I'm going to try and have whoever's doing this for me uh, in my in my absence there at the at, in Canada to um, send us the file, and we'll, we'll we'll have the episode out for you on Thursday. So it is directly live from the um, IE conference. In, wow, in- fun! Yeah, I guess it's also in Canada. Taylor Swift. Anywho, that's my cue. <laughs> We're done here. So thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be back next Monday. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much for joining us. Simply Trade is brought to you by the generous contributions of Global Training Center. You can follow the show and GTC on LinkedIn or Twitter and other social networks. Make sure you check out the show notes in the description for a full rundown of today's show with all the important links. Also, make sure that you share this with a friend and subscribe on your favorite streaming platform. We really like hearing from you. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to rate and review wherever you listen to this podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest in the show or would like to sponsor Simply Trade or suggest any topic you would like for us to discuss, please contact us via email at simplytrade at globaltrainingcenter.com or you can DM us on Twitter at simplytradepod. Thank you again for the privilege of your time. Happy trading. Simply Trade is not a law firm or an advisor. The topics and discussions conducted by Simply Trade hosts and guests should not be considered and is not intended to substitute legal advice. You should seek appropriate counsel for your own situations. These conversations and information are directed towards listeners in the United States for informational, educational, and entertainment purposes only and should not be substituted for legal advice. No listener or viewer of this podcast should act or refrain from acting on the basis of information on this podcast without first seeking legal advice from counsel. Information on this podcast may not be up to date depending on the time of publishing and the time of viewership. The content of this posting is provided as is. No representations are made that the content is error free. The views expressed in or through this podcast are those of the individual speakers, not those of their respective employers or Global Training Center as a whole. All liability with respect to actions taken or not taken based on the contents of this podcast are hereby expressly disclaimed.